Movie star. There are many videos on YouTube about building cabins in the forest, about survival when the manure hits the fan, about nostalgia for how your ancestors lived in the 19th century. Some of these videos actually make it look easy. It is not easy. A one hour video showing the building a cabin in the North Woods will actually take all summer. This video will not show digging splinters out of hands or pulling off ticks or trying to sleep among the mosquitoes. These videos do not show the dangers either, and the North Woods is dangerous. If you are cutting down trees, eventually you will miscalculate and you could wind up with a broken leg or a deep cut from your saw or axe. A serious injury when you are miles from help and out of cell phone range can be fatal. Probably you will fail, and it will be late September and your cabin will be barely livable. Your fireplace smokes badly because the rocks and mortar you used to build it with cracked in the heat. You seriously underestimated the amount of firewood you would need when it is minus 20 degrees every night for 3 weeks in January. You try to walk out, you get sweated up and exhausted from walking through snow 2 feet deep. Or you break through the ice on a creek and your feet get wet. Or, more likely, you get sick or a minor injury becomes infected. And so, in the spring, if you have not returned, people will go looking for you and all they find is what is left of your body. So, there is danger in so-called civilized areas also. We know our politicians are playing with nuclear fire and if they push Russia or China too far the result will be that 95% of all Americans die. Not in the nuclear war itself, that will only kill 20%. The other 75% will kill each other fighting over the contents of a grocery store first and a dumpster later. So maybe an 80% chance of survival in the North Woods is better than having no place to go. No place to go when the city mobs descend on your suburban neighborhood and the grocery stores only have greeting cards left. 80% is better than 5%. This video is a little different. This is not survival techniques from the year 1820. This is how people lived in the rural areas of Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota and the Dakotas in the 1920s and how some still live. This is substantially easier and safer and a whole lot more pleasant. Maybe more importantly, this is affordable. You can do this now, you can live like this for $300 a month and 2 hours of work a day. So what do you need for reasonable survival? You need heat in the winter, and for this you have a wood stove. It will cost you about $200 a year to have wood like this delivered. You will still need to split it and store it where it can dry. In the case if the little house in the background, there is a fireplace instead when, or if, there is no electricity. Normally there is heat from natural gas when there is electricity to pump the hot water. I will talk about electricity and internet later. The good thing about splitting firewood like this is that you do not need a fitness center. The next thing you need is clean water. Let us show. This does not mean yeah. drinking from a river or a creek. If you do that you will get parasites. So the next section of this video is your water source. Really good clean water as much as you need. When there is electricity, you have hot water for a shower and to wash clothes also. Okay, you have a warm place to sleep and clean water to drink. Next you need food. This is something the North Woods survival videos barely mention. 
apparently they think that hunting deer and rabbits or whatever is easy. It is easy, until you understand that you are not alone, that there are other people nearby hunting the same deer. Then the deer population plummets and you sit in a tree stand for two weeks and see nothing within range except other hunters and you start to worry that other hunters might start hunting you. You can't have a garden, growing garden food in the forest is nearly impossible. You can't have chickens or rabbits when there are hungry predators like weasels and foxes waiting for you to sleep. In the alternative of this video, you can have a big garden. You can have chickens and rabbits. Maybe even a few goats or a cow for milk and cheese. If your place does not have enough land, you can rent a garden for $50 and they will even plow it for you. For basics, potatoes, butternut squash, onions, cabbage, tomatoes, a half acre is enough. If you would like more variety, an acre would be better. If you want chickens, you will need some grain to supplement what they can forage for. Rabbits are easy too, you feed them grass and keep the hutches clean and dry. Now, what else do you need? And what does this makeshift cabin in the North Woods not provide? People, of course, people you can trust. Because living totally alone is not good for either your physical or mental health. Living in the village provides both. As for trustworthy people, you get what you give. If you want to be part of the community, you can, and in a village such as in this video, that means the church. If you get sick or hurt, someone will help you. If you need someone to talk to, village people love to talk. If you are a man, there is no reason to be single and alone and unloved. If you really want to be a semi-hermit, you can, but why? Why would you want to make your life difficult and unpleasant when you can do much better? So, what else is a feature of life in the village? Well, you have a garden you need to store food for the winter so you need a place that does not freeze. And if you expect food to not spoil in the spring, you need a place that is cool. Villagers learned centuries ago that the solution was a root cellar. In the future, maybe the very near future, they will double as a shelter from radioactive fallout. The last aspect of food is to cook it, and this is what a traditional Ukrainian village stove looks like. It is big. This is a relatively small one, without an oven. It heats the little house and it has a metal top over the wood burning box. You put a frying pan or a saucepan or a Dutch oven on the stove for frying meat and for boiling potatoes that are the staple food of Ukraine. Or a big pot for borscht. So what does it cost to live in such a village? And what at the level of civilization? The following slides give an example. The rent is month to month with no deposit. Rent is $200 a month. This particular house includes gas heat, electricity and good satellite internet that tests at 50 megabits a second in both directions. These utilities are $100 a month. Wood for the fireplace is extra and might cost $100 for the season. That is it, 300 US dollars a month, payable in cash. You get a bedroom with a comfortable full-sized bed and a small couch that expands into a single bed in the main room. You get a full kitchen with pots and pans, a refrigerator and hot water. In the oversized bathroom there is a washing machine, a toilet, a bidet, a shower, a tub and a sauna. And no, you don't have to help split wood as I did, though you can if you want. There is a small grocery store about a mile away and a supermarket in the adjoining town about six miles away. There are restaurants and there is a really beautiful river. Neighbors are talkative and friendly. It is quiet at night except for dogs and roosters. It is in all respects much better than a cabin in the woods. It is much better than being poor in the USA on social security or disability alone. So why not? Because this is in Ukraine? Because there is a war? These are irrelevant. The war is never coming anywhere near this house and you are safer than in the USA. 
Leave a comment if you have questions and please be sure to like this video and subscribe to me if you have not already subscribed.